I need to hit 100 platinums by the end of the year, and if I fail, we'll have to delete my PlayStation account forever, losing all my saves, memories, and of course, the 67 platinum trophies I already own. And the next game I'm taking on is God of War Ragnarok. Released back in November of 2022 and already considered one of the best games of all time, I had this one on my radar for a while now. With the recent release of the all new roguelike mode Valhalla last December, it was a no brainer. I had to platinum this game next. But little did I know, this would be the most painful trophy hunt yet, bringing me to the brink of absolute insanity that's because we'll be playing the game on the hardest difficulty give me god of war which means enemies take a lot less damage and we take a whole lot more and on top of this i will not be using any resurrection stones either god of war ragnarok has 48 total trophies and our plan of attack is simple beat the game grab all the collectibles and take down some berserkers before moving on to valhalla and grabbing the rest of the trophies there ending this hunt with the hardest boss i've ever had to face in any game ever the new valkyrie queen herself, Gana. The story kicks off with an intense chase sequence as Freya hunts down Kratos for offing her son Baldur, and trust me when I say, she's pissed. After finally escaping, we make it back home only to witness the heartbreaking loss of Atreus' dog, Fenrir. And nothing hits harder to me than animal deaths in games and movies, so I did not take this well at all. Kratos then decides to get some sleep, and we wake up to find out Atreus never came home. So we head out to find him until eventually getting attacked by a bear, and after only the second try, we take him out, only to discover it was actually Atreus. Yeah, Kratos isn't winning any Father of the Year awards after this, let me tell you. But on the bright side, we unlock our first trophy of the game, a grisly encounter for battling a bear. Flash forward after Atreus and Kratos come home and we're visited by none other than the God of Thunder himself, Thor. After a very awkward conversation at the dinner table, are visited by his daddy, Odin, who proposes a truce and seemingly just wants peace. So what do you say? No. Very simple. A man of few words. We then get into our first boss fight of the game, and after only a few deaths, finally beat Thor, who then just up and leaves. Which still kind of surprises me to this day, seeing as how Kratos killed both of his sons in the last game, but I guess Odin has bigger plans for him. We then unlock the trophy Blood Debt for battling the God of Thunder. At this point in the Platinum run, we're doing pretty good, only dying a handful of times, and it especially helps with bosses like Thor having checkpoints when you get them down to a certain amount of health. So I got a little overconfident in here, especially after just beating The Last of Us 1 and 2 on Grounded, which you can also check out after this video. Oh, but don't worry, this confidence will quickly get shattered a lot sooner than you think. Moving on, we reunite with Atreus and push through Midgard some more, along the way unlocking the trophy, knock off the rust for purchasing our first skill. We then reach our first mini boss of the game and the difficulty quickly sets in as I learn the hard way that bosses like this have no checkpoints. <laughs> Kidding me? No! There's no way! But after taking a small break, I finally got it done. Oh my god. Sometimes all you need is a break. Later, we reunited with Brock and Sindri in the realm between realms, where we finally upgrade our armor and unlock the trophy Spit Shine. After this, we begin our search for Tyr in Svartalheim, which is one of the biggest realms in the game with a ton of collectibles to find and lots to do, including a massive side quest for righting Mimir's past wrongs by freeing this gigantic Lindbacher, which unlocks the trophy Making Amends. We then run into our next mini boss, the first of many, Hateful Draugrs. And honestly, the Hateful is a perfect name for them as this fight filled me with plenty of it. Mm. <sighs> Bro, why are you f***ing kidding me? Where did that come from? Oh my god, I'm pushing the wrong buttons now. Oh, Go! That's what I'm talking about. But after finally getting it done, we push on to the next area where I completely lose it. Oh my God, how many of these things are there? You see, what makes this game even harder, besides mini bosses not having checkpoints, is the constant ganking. Having to fight large groups of enemies who can all one or two shot you instantly without warning, resulting in some of the most rage inducing moments like this one. After finally beating this fight, 
Oh my god, finally, dude. And wrapping up everything we could do in this area, we meet Durlin, who says he won't help us find Tyr in fear of Odin, but ends up pointing us in the right direction anyway. We then continue on to the mines, taking out our next rage inducing Draugr. Finally. And so finally finding Tyr, who not only is a complete wuss, but also strongly resembles Asmongold for some reason. And look, I know everybody and their mother has made this same joke and it's low hanging fruit at this point, but man, the resemblance is uncanny. Tyr then runs away and we head after him, taking out a bunch of enemies along the way until finally catching up to him. He eventually agrees to join us and we head back to the realm between realms, where we then take control of Atreus, who together with Sindri has the bright idea to sneak out in order to to try and convince Freya to help us take down Odin once and for all. We travel back to Midgard and make our way. And I gotta say, the Atreus sections in this game were a breath of fresh air for me. And that's because they were super easy compared to the rest of the game. You can literally just sit back and shoot arrows the entire time with little to no threat. Eventually though, we found Freya and yeah, she wasn't having it. Enough. Leave this place. Go and do not return. So Atreus heads back and almost gets busted by Kratos until coming up with the best excuse ever. Atreus, where have you been? We take control as Kratos once again and now head to Alfheim, but not before meeting one of my favorite characters in the game. Delightfully nutty with a hint of squidding. Once in Alfheim, we find Groa's shrine and discover the truth. The prophecy was a lie. Asgard will be destroyed and Odin will die. After finishing the story here, we head over to the other side of Alfheim, grabbing more collectibles and doing even more side missions, include freeing the first of two half goofas that we need for the trophy full goofa. Before finding another Draugr and getting so pissed off i literally broke my headphones i'm tired of hearing the stupid voice lines over and over again makes it worse let's go i don't care if i just cheese that that fight was unfair as hell and great that's fantastic. No, you know what? We're good. And we made our way back home. Where after falling asleep, we take control as Atreus once again, who somehow wakes up in Jotunheim and meets the giant Angerboda. We then travel with her as Atreus learns more about his role in the future and after trying to riz her up and getting friend zone. Thanks for the... We're then introduced to Angerboda's grandma, Gryla, who is an evil giant that takes the souls of animals. Atreus and Angerboda then decide to take her down for good in a boss battle that honestly didn't give me too much trouble. After which we unlock the trophy, the cauldron. We then head back and Atreus goes to sleep in order to get back home. Only one problem, he wakes up in the wrong one. After clearing out some enemies, he runs right into a very upset Kratos and discovers he was actually missing for two days. Do not lie to me again. Why did you come here? Alone. What is it you will not tell me? I can't talk about it, but I just need you to trust me. You kept secrets, but I trust you. That's not the same. Why not? You hid things. Mother hid things. You had good reasons, and so do I. Me. Why can't you just... We now take control as Kratos once again, and after taking out some more enemies, get into our first Valkyrie fight of the game, and you can probably guess how well that went. God damn it! This fucking, oh! After finally getting it done, Freya is about to kill Kratos, getting her long-awaited revenge, until Atreus turns into a bear yet again. Kratos then stops him, resulting in Freya finally having a change of heart, but only under one condition. He has to help her cut the binds, keeping her tied to Midgard that were put in place by her ex-husband, Odin. Before heading out though, we get another trophy for beating Freya, this one called Backyard Brawl. We now head to Vanaheim to locate the source of Freya's curse, and this realm is massive. Here we find more collectibles until eventually running into Freya's brother, Freyr, and the rest of his group who initially try to stop us until Freya convinces them otherwise. We continue on until reaching our next Draugr and at this point you already know how this is gonna go. One of these again, my worst nightmare. This one does the f***ing explosions too? Come on, man. Ah, 
but we get it done and i was finally starting to feel like i was getting better at this game especially when a few minutes later i ran into this guy and took him out only after a few tries let's go got him this is why i love souls games and god of war on the hardest difficulty man there is nothing more satisfying than figuring out a boss and then just you know don't worry i was quickly brought back down to earth when finding the source of freya's curse meet nidhogg the bane of my existence even with checkpoints this boss fight gave me such a hard time but after dying a lot we finally finished it and unlocked the trophy root of the problem after the fight we were also rewarded with the amulet which lets us equip enchantments and after slotting in our first one unlock the trophy how it started continuing on with the story and freya finally breaks the curse and makes up with kratos we then head back to camp and after freya makes amends with her brother Brother, explore the rest of the massive Vanaheim area, finding more collectibles and banging out a ton of side missions, including a really important one where we had to find this mysterious orb for Lunda, which just turned out to be a dog toy, but regardless, got us the trophy new friends. Hey, trophy new friends, let's go. Following this, we went to retrieve one of Freya's old swords in another side mission here, which unlocked the trophy, it was a good day. At this point, everything was going great, but then I got hit with the most infuriating boss fight yet. I gotta fight two of these things at once. You gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. Then help me, Freya. Fuck, man. See, I can't do nothing. If the other one comes for me while I'm trying to fight the first one, there's nothing I can do. Like in that moment right there, I was gonna shield bash him, but I got stun locked by the other guy. Fucking God damn it, dude. <laughs> Give me a break here, man. What am I supposed to do? I can't. Sony Santa Monica, listen to me. I cannot shield bash the guy like you want me to when the other one is shooting lightning rods up my asshole. Oh, let's go. Let's go. With this gigantic area finally done, at least for now, it was time to pick up the story once again. But before I did, I decided to make a pit stop at Halfheim to free the other half goofa. Full goofa, let's go. After this, we made our way back home and Atreus decided he wants to go to Asgard with Odin. Of course, no one likes this idea and in a fit of rage, he turns into a bear and runs away. Ending up in Midgard, where after finding Odin's raven, Hugin gets sent to Asgard. After making our way through this new realm and climbing this gigantic wall, we're introduced to my favorite character in the game, Heimdall. So, what part of the enormous wall made you think, oh, Visitors must be welcome. And look, I know that's an unpopular opinion, but he plays such a great villain in this game that it makes the build up to the moment later in the story hit that much harder. And he's seriously hilarious. We then meet Odin again after getting in a fight with Heimdall that was quickly put to a stop by Thor. He showed us around a bit and we learned the truth about what he's really after. Infinite knowledge through the secrets behind this mask. And he needs Atreus's help to figure it out. After discovering a hidden message, Atreus is teleported to Muspelheim with Thor. And it's totally not awkward so where are we going how the f am i supposed to know <laughs> we made our way through eventually finding the other half of the mask and are quickly teleported back to odin after which we take control of kratos again who decides he wants to find the norns to get some answers so we set off for midgard and along the way get our next trophy besties for petting our wolves specky and spana we then finally find the norns after riding a kelpie underwater and kratos learns that atreus is in fact in asgard and that kratos himself will die and there's nothing he can do to change his fate armed with this knowledge kratos finally decided to go after atreus which means as fate foretold he'll have to fight heimdall so brock and sentry devise a plan to get kratos a new weapon drop near we head out with brock to the forge in swaddleheim where the spear is crafted using kratos's god's blood before getting blessed by brock himself and on our way back home gets stopped by odin who tries to plead with kratos before giving up and hitting him with some serious low blows what do you even know of god in your lifetimes has anyone ever worshipped you ever prayed to you can you even imagine that kind of love no you don't care about mortals you don't care about anything beyond yourself beyond the monster 
who kills without cause. Is it any wonder that your boy is in no rush to come back to you? We're then ambushed by Odin's army before finally finding the first of many Berserker gravestones. Deciding to take it on right away, I had no idea what I was in for. Oh. The f*** am I going for? Mm. Mm. Okay, he might go for it again. Yep. Okay, that, that was bullshit because my timing was on point like it usually is for that sky attack. Why did they have to make that so f***ing precise? You already have to worry about being precise enough with the parries. Why do you have to worry about the dive too? But after beating my head against the wall for hours and dying more times than I could count, finally got it done. Let's f***ing go, baby! After this, we explored a bit more and found another Berserker gravestone. Feeling like I could take on the world after the last one, I decided to go for this one too. And yeah, big mistake. How do I dodge that? How do I dodge that? See, look, like, bro, what am I supposed to do? I don't get it. Even if I have better armor here, that's not going to help me. I get one shot in no matter what I'm wearing. What is the problem? Oh, ah. oh. I hate that attack. I don't know how to stop it. See, what am I supposed to do? Two and a half hours later, and I finally take him down. <laughs> Next up was the side mission for Durlin, where we had to find his hammer. Doing so got us the trophy Rebel Leader. Following this, it was time to pick up the story once again, but this time as Atreus, who together with Thor's daughter Thrud, has to find the final piece of the mask in Helheim. But unfortunately, in the process, Atreus makes a drastic mistake, as he frees the giant wolf Garm, resulting in him wreaking havoc by opening rifts in all of the realms. Whoops. To make matters even worse, Heimdall caught him in the act and immediately snitches to Odin. After pissing everybody off, Atreus then decides it's time to go back home. And when he does, we see that all hell has been let loose. Literally. And after fighting some of the Hellwalkers off, we switch back to Kratos, where we learn the new Spartan Rage, Wrath. This unlocks the trophy Spartan Ways for remembering Kratos' Spartan teachings. After taking out all the enemies, it's time to clean up this mess. Kratos and Atreus make their way back to Helheim, where we finally face off against Garm, and after taking him out, unlock the trophy off the leash. There's only one problem. No! You gotta be shitting me. But in an extremely rare moment, Atreus actually comes up with a brilliant idea. I'm sorry. What happened, boy? They're gonna fight him for a third time? Ben? Are you? missed you too oh the feels see back when his dog Fenrir died in the beginning of the game his soul actually went into his knife so realizing this Atreus plunged his knife into Garm turning him into his old dog Fenrir with Garm unable to cause any more harm nice sorry words, I had to do man. it we also find our last and final shield unlocking the trophy phalanx we now head back to Vanaheim where we fulfill the prophecy with Skull and Hati as the realm itself is under attack by Odin until the fateful time comes the showdown between Kratos in Heimdall. Ooh. Gotcha. You actually hit me. Fuck. I'm sure there's a couple more phases because that was way too easy. Is this about the little runt? Oh, now I am definitely 
going to cut him. Oh. You think you get to just walk away? That is not how this works. <laughs> to decide my fate! Let's f***ing go, dude. After making quick work of them, we unlock our next trophy comeuppance. With this event officially kicking off Ragnarok, we finally reach the final act of this story and hop on Freyr's boat to escape. But before going too far, it was time to explore this gigantic crater area filled with dragons that was just unlocked for us, grabbing some more collectibles and knocking out some more side missions. This monster hunter like portion of the game was really fun and really cool and got me a ton of not only crafting materials, but also dragon skill armor that I could finally craft to unlock the trophy dragon slayer and shortly after that we also fully upgraded the amulet to unlock the trophy how it's going with a few more trophies in the bag it was time to continue the story with atreus who comes up with a plan to join odin once again in order to complete the mask and gain infinite knowledge after meeting with odin again he sends us off to find the last piece of the mask but first we had to find thor who just so happened to be getting wasted at a local bar once we finished up there and thor proved to be a disappointment to his daughter yet again we were off to helheim we then find the last piece of the mask until sh hits the fan. Sif found out that Kratos killed Heimdall and tells the Valkyries to take in Atreus until Odin steps in to stop it. This causes a rift in the family as Sif tries to convince Thor to stop letting Odin control him. Thor then goes after Atreus, but thanks to the stone he got from Sindri, is able to escape and rejoin Kratos. Once back, the group plans their next move until we're hit with one of the biggest twists in gaming history. One last time, I will pick up my spear. I will lead us to Asgard. Excuse me, but if you got a way to Asgard, where's that idea been this whole f***ing while? That's not that a fair question, brother. It's an ancient path. We can't reach it from here. Where then? Let me collect my things and I'll show you. You ain't got no things. And where are you going with that last rock? Hey, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you never shut up. <laughs> Run! All the things, Odin. Let go of the boy and face me. I am in control here. Throw me the mask now. Too bad, son. Looks like war after all. After losing Brock, we go to check in on Sindri, and he's not looking so hot. I gave you everything. My skills, my friendship, my home, my secrets, my treasures. And you just kept taking. And now what have I got? Not even my family. I... What can we do? There is no me. There's only you. So what you can do is get the f*** out of my sight. Damn. Kratos and Atreus then go back home and together with everyone else, devise a plan to unite the realms and attack Asgard, with the first order of business being to go to Muspelheim. Once there, we find Surtur who just can't be bothered. After clearing out the wave of enemies and a lot of convincing, Surtur finally decides to go along with our plan and become Ragnarok. But while this is all happening, we get attacked by not one, but two Valkyries. We eventually got it done though and unlocked the trophy better together after this sick cutscene. Oh, so satisfying. Oh, 
Later, we head back to Midgard where after an epic speech, Kratos uses Galahorn and the war begins. The group splits up and we make our way to the wall fighting every type of enemy you could possibly think of until our boy Ragnarok shows up and starts breaking everything followed quickly by Sindri who at this point has completely lost all humanity he had left, resulting in this emotional moment between Kratos and Atreus. Son, listen closely. You feel their pain because that is who you are and you must never sacrifice that never, not for anyone. I was wrong, Atreus. I was wrong. Open your heart. Open your heart to their suffering. That is your mother's wish. And mine as well. Today, son. Today. We will be better. We then take control again as Atreus and continue pushing forward until running into a very angry Throod who's just about to kill him until her mom steps in and she learns the truth. It's who Odin is. It's who he's always been. He'll sacrifice anyone at a problem with one of him. I had hoped that your father would stand up to him, but now it, it has to be you. Do you understand? Sindri and Atreus then break the wall open and we continue the climb until Thor shows up for round two with Kratos. Now this fight wasn't that bad and after only a couple of tries we got it done and made peace with Thor until the unexpected happens. Why isn't he dead? Are you talking? Who told you to do that? You don't talk. You don't think. I think you kill. It's a simple f***ing concept. I am your father. Take the hammer and kill who I tell you to kill. No. I didn't want this. I did not want this. No! Dude, this was all their fault. They've done this to us, to our family. It's now time for the final story boss fight of the game and Odin was no pushover. I was stuck on this fight for a while, especially in his second phase. But after finally beating him, we reach the ending. Atreus takes his soul, trapping it in one of his giant balls, but for our boy Sindri, that wasn't good enough. Freyr then comes and warns us that Ragnarok is destroying everything until slamming his sword down, causing an explosion so big it knocks Atreus unconscious and kills Freyr. We then awaken as Atreus and get our next trophy, Ragnarok, for defeating Odin. Then at the conclusion of the story, Atreus decides to leave on his own. Kratos gives him his blessing and we get this emotional moment. We survived today because of your choices. Who to trust, who to call friend, son. You are ready. Loki will go. Atreus remains. The once vengeful and hateful god of war was now worshipped and looked up to. Something he got clowned on for earlier in the story by Odin. Now with the story complete, it was time to move on to the rest of this platinum run. First up was the collectible cleanup. Going from realm to realm, we found every flower for the trophy of the forest, every book for the trophy of the librarian, the curator trophy for finding every artifact, full belly for finding all health and rage upgrades, and finally the collector for finding all the relics and sword hilts. While knocking those collectible trophies out, I also finished all the side mission related ones as well, including the funeral for a friend trophy where we had to attend Brock's funeral, rest in peace, the invasive species trophy for finishing all of the crater hunts in Vanaheim, and the rifle place trophy for returning returning all the Linworms to Ratatasker, along with the Pure of Heart trophy for returning all his sags of the Four Seasons. Wrapping up all this finally gave me enough materials to fully upgrade my armor to unlocking the trophy ready for commitment. With all that done, it was time to take on the Trials of Muspelheim, which started off easy, but were absolutely god awful in the later and more difficult rounds. Oh my god, can you get the fucking? Mm, my goodness, dude, there's like 20 enemies here! off i'm never playing another god of war game on the hardest difficulty ever again but after raging for a few hours oh thank god let's go trials by fire baby we're done now that experience was rough but nowhere near as bad as what i was about to go through with the berserker fights oh what the f even killed me there oh 
god every single one of these guys was a pain in the ass but within a few tries i was able to get each one of them done eat shit. let's go done let's fucking go what is that second try <laughs> done baby except for three berserker fights in particular that drove me to absolute madness you see at this point in the playthrough i was used to getting ganked but nothing could prepare me for the upcoming berserker fights where in one i had to take on two berserkers at once <sighs> every time i get so close i get hit with the bullshit Let's fucking go! Let's go! Thank you! <laughs> oh my god! And the other, I had to take on three at the same time, which I eventually got done too after driving myself insane. Yes! Let's fucking go, baby! But after tricking myself into thinking there was no possible way anything could get harder than that, I witnessed what's easily the most frustrating fight in the entire game, where what seemed like a simple 1v1 turned into the most unfair bullshit I've ever seen as the Berserker here spawns five ads at a time periodically throughout the fight, with each one being able to one or two shot you at any time without notice. There were so many moments here where I just wanted to give up on this platinum or at least lower the difficulty, but I pushed through and after spending almost an entire day on it, finally got the lucky run I was waiting for. God damn it, bro. Come on. I blocked that move. Oh. Please don't tell me I have to kill the rest of them. Just end it there. Just end it there. Oh, oh my God, yes. <laughs> oh, thank God, dude. Seriously, whoever designed these Berserker fights needs to be fired. We now had just one Berserker boss fight left, King Hroth. And this guy was honestly a piece of cake compared to everyone before him. It was honestly a joke. And within a couple of runs, I got him done too, finally unlocking the trophy grave mistake. At this point, we were now just one trophy away from Platinum and standing in our way was the Valkyrie Queen Gana. But yeah, I wasn't ready for all that. So instead, it was time for us to check out the all new roguelike mode Valhalla and grab the 12 trophies over there. The trophies here were pretty straightforward, requiring us to do numerous runs while working on the mastery challenges along the way. Each run had maybe around five to six levels, typically ending with a mini boss, a cool little classic God of War section, and a final boss fight. All while Kratos learns to master himself and decide whether or not he wants to be this realm's god of war the first trophy we got here was invitation accepted for taking on the challenge of valhalla quickly followed by style points for equipping a cosmetic armor then it was time for our first real run which sees kratos reunite with the god he killed long ago helios and this guy cannot shut up so we do what anyone else would in this situation and stuff his head in a cage using him as a sacrifice unfortunately he turns back into mimir at the last second but we're still able to get him out and are then saved by Sigrid. after this we unlocked our next trophy dark odyssey for participating in a sacrifice our next run ends with a big reveal of who exactly invited kratos here and it's none other than tear who i personally feel like they really redeemed with this dlc because of how soft they portrayed him in the base game after taking him out the first time we unlock the trophy blood sweat and tear now the following runs are more of the same battling tear over and over again in order to finally get inside the door behind him throughout this process we unlock the trophies scry me a river for finding kratos's oath stone no kratos no scry for reclaiming Pandora's statue, Wayfarer for visiting all nine realms in Valhalla, understood the assignment for completing nine mastery quests, and you again for finding three boat keys. Then after we finish the story up, we experienced an amazing cutscene between the Kratos of old and the Kratos of new that just gave me goosebumps afterwards. I remember how it felt to take that throne, all that it meant and all that it did not. A god of war, god of pain, of suffering, of destruction, hope, and all else is lost. You lost everything and everyone. There is no forgiving you. You chose! Should I this same man? Should I lose everything and everyone? There's to be enough left inside so that I do not become you. I do not know. But I have hope. You are cruel and arrogant and selfish. But you are more than that. You have always been more than what others saw you are more than that 
unlocking the trophy god of hope we were now just two trophies away from wrapping up this valhalla dlc fight at the forum which is a secret fight that unlocks when you meet certain conditions and easy come easy go for getting 15,000 fleeting coins in a run and luckily for me i was able to knock them both out in the same run putting a pin in valhalla for good it was now time for what i was dreading the most this entire playthrough it was time to face the valkyrie queen gana the one boss keeping me from platinum everything i've done so far came down to this moment and as someone who faced the hardest bosses you could think of from games like bloodborne elden ring and more this was the hardest thing i've ever done in any game a fight that would last two entire days me dude jesus christ almighty just so quick man i don't know what to do with that Fuck, that's so fast there's no time to dodge that one shot man ah Oh, come on, man. Fucking God damn it, dude. There. True queen and the bear and the wolf. Let's go. God, that feels so good to finally get that fight, man. Okay, before people sh on me in the comments, I did that on Give Me God of War. And you know, if you change the difficulty, you can't go back to Give Me God of War. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and leave a like for more. Don't forget to comment down below which game you want to see me platinum next. And be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay in the loop between uploads. I'll catch you all on the next video.